today is gonna be a late night push day and i don't really work out during the night too often because i like to keep it in the morning since your endorphins begin to flow the adrenaline begins to rush and it can make it very difficult for you to fall asleep and mess up your sleep schedule i do want to bring up that i am very busy lately and i might not have been on schedule or that i've been struggling to keep up on the schedule of the every other day posts so what i'm thinking of doing is decreasing the amount of time that i'm posting so instead of every other day i might do once every three days or once every four days and you may be wondering why are you busy or what's going on because you've kept up this uploading schedule for so long and some things just take priority in life and it's nothing serious it's just that i've started uni recently if you didn't know and i do want to focus on the studies and they they do come first because there's a lot of competitive stuff that i'm trying to get into so by no means at all is youtube stopping or is this workout stopping or anything my fitness journey is still going to go on forever and ever it's just that i'll be documenting it less and less and i am aware that i've always had a pump cover on and you haven't really been able to track my results or see the progress visually so i haven't really been doing pose downs at the end of each video or i haven't been taking off my shirt and it's just because i like to have a pump cover on at all times and i don't really like to attract attention to myself when i'm working out but i will be starting off with the overhead press as usual then i'll probably move on to the seated overhead press the machine one and then incline bench for the upper chest incline dumbbell presses for the upper chest and the reason i do those is because they give you a very nice upper chest stretch and then to finish off i'll do some cable lateral raises i'm just crossing the road right now or i'll do some dips for the lower chest because all of the previous exercises i have a front delt heavy so the overhead presses the shoulder presses or very upper chest heavy because you don't want to develop that saggy look in your chest that a lot of people have from overly excessive benching or flat benching to be specific and often neglecting the upper chest but you also don't want to have an underdeveloped lower chest so that's why i would put in the dips at the end and since every single other muscle group is fatigued that means that my chest has to go into overdrive to push the weight and carry the heavy lifting so yeah see you in the gym when performing the overhead press, you don't want to go shoulder width or anything wider than shoulder width. You can see that my hands are slightly closer than shoulder width. And this allows for you to maximize your pushing power. Now, obviously you can experiment with wider or closer grips and whatever you feel is best, keep doing it that way. There are two ways to position your feet when performing an overhead press and that's having them side by side some people do feel unstable because they can wobble forwards and backwards. So to prevent this, you can have one foot stepping forward and one foot stepping back. But then this will make you less stable in wobbling left and right. The way I like to do it is by having my feet side by side, ensuring that I'm squeezing my glutes because this helps you stabilize your lower back and preventing you from overarching it, which can lead to lower back injuries. The way I always ensure I get a upper chest pump whenever I'm doing incline bench is by doing a warm-up set, which really isn't a warm-up set. It's me going to a failure with 20s aside and maybe leaving one rep in the tank, but essentially reaching failure. And then I'd increase the weight by 5 or 10 kgs aside, do that till failure. Then I'd rest for about a minute or two without letting too much time pass because then the pump does begin to fade away. I'll take off the 5 or 10 kg I had on, then I'll rep out the 20s to a failure again, and that would be all of my incline bench sets done because I've then got incline dumbbell press to execute. What's interesting is it was only on this push day that this started to happen, and when I was doing the incline dumbbell press, I was feeling a clicking shoulder at the bottom of the movement on my left side, and this would never ever happen prior to using the shoulder press machine. And I'm 100% confident that it is because of the machine and that machines do cause these imbalances or weaknesses in smaller muscles or connective muscles such as the rotator cuffs. 
I would say my shoulder health has been pretty good and I haven't had any clicking in my elbows or in my shoulders whenever lifting weights but as soon as I've introduced any form of machinery that doesn't accommodate or let my range of motion move in the way my body is built for because any machine that you use is built as an average for many people and not for the slight imperfections in range of motion that you have. And I can assure you that as long as you do free weights, you use proper technique and you don't ego lift, the risk of injury is far lower. Simply listening to your body is the best way to prevent injury because most injuries happen at the least expected time. And it's when you're on a high and you're extremely motivated or excited to hit a PR because you're feeling stronger than usual, that's when they hit you. And before you know it, you're out for six months and you can't even gain any form of muscle or strength and you're just trying your hardest to maintain without losing any progress. Whereas assessing the risk to reward ratio might have taken you an extra week or two to reach whatever goal you're trying to get to, but it's a lot more sustainable in the long term. Moving on to cable lateral raises, I usually like to perform these either with dumbbells or cables. When I am performing them with cables, it does allow for my form to be a lot more strict and swing a lot less which is the main reason that if I am doing dumbbell work for my shoulders, I include it afterwards because using the heavy weight to initially tire out the mid delt and then completely finish it off with a stricter, lighter weight is a great way to get a huge mid delt pump. Finishing off with body weight dips, I found the best way to get a lower chest pump with these is to go extremely deep if your mobility does allow for it, lean forward slightly, compared to staying upright, which engages your triceps more, performing them as explosively as possible and going to absolute failure, even including some partials. I hope this video helped. Make sure you like and subscribe and chat to you later.